All right, let's put the uh, tools together. What were the tools again? PCR, which does what? It uh, solves the problem of small sample size. And uh, then gel electrophoresis. And I say, well, what's this picture? Well, this is from your book. Uh, it is a, uh, what's called an STR profile. STR stands for short tandem repeats. Your textbook uh, sort of explains how that works. And uh, uh, I am not actually going to require for the lecture part that you understand anything about short tandem repeats. But we can see that uh, something here, before we move on to something that's, I think, a little easier way to kind of ease into it uh, than the STRs. This is an STR profile of DNA found at the crime scene. You see all these various peaks and so forth, including X peak and Y peak and so forth. This is an STR profile of, DNA, of the DNA of the crime suspect. You notice they match exactly. I think this guy's in trouble. Assuming it's the guy, I think this guy's in trouble. But what I would like to do is explain it in a simpler way. Uh, this, these techniques have evolved over the years. They're quite fancy now. Uh, if you get into this, you'll learn the fanciest techniques. I would like to explain it in simple terms using what we know about gel electrophoresis. Um, and so, what is a DNA profile? What is a DNA, they, they've been called DNA fingerprints. Kind of like, you know, fingerprints, they kind of can kind of identify people based on the fingerprints. Same thing with DNA fingerprints, so to speak, or a DNA profile. A DNA fingerprint or profile is simply a pattern of lines on a gel. A pattern of lines on a gel. And so, how does it work? Well, first of all, as we've said earlier, when DNA is compared with DNA, uh, you don't use all six feet. The people that do this don't use all six feet. They just use very short sections known to be different from person to person. And they take those short sections, a bunch of them, and chop them up and spread them out on a gel. Chop them up and spread them out on a gel. And so, the pattern that's formed is a pattern that is unique to a particular individual, at least when you put all the patterns together. How many different segments does your book say are used in uh, DNA profiling? Thirteen. Thirteen different segments. And so one or two or three or four segments may match other people. Several segments may match other people. But put all thirteen together, you've got, unless you've got an identical twin, you've got a unique pattern of lines on a gel. And so why is that? Well, if your DNA is different, it will chop up differently. Different size pieces will travel different distances and produce different patterns on a gel. Let's, uh, let's look at this picture right here. This picture is from a previous edition of your textbook. And uh, it shows a gel that was used in a uh, murder trial. And uh, first of all, let's look at a couple things here. For example, this lane right here. This lane looks an awful lot like, like that lane over there. This lane looks a lot like that lane. What do you suppose those lanes are? This one at the right uh, and this one over here at the left. Well, those are standard lanes. Standard lanes. And so this gel could be compared to other gels based on this... Uh, uh, mixture of fragments of known size. Well, the uh, previous edition of your book explained what these three lanes are all about. You see shirt, shirt, and V. V is for victim. The, the victim, uh, what happened was um, two drops of blood were found on the alleged assailant's shirt. Two drops of blood were found on the alleged assailant's shirt. And so, that blood was analyzed using, first of all, probably PCR to get the sample big enough, and then uh, using certain standard techniques, the small fragments of DNA from that DNA sample were chopped up and spread out on the gel and created a pattern. Well, this, is, this would be one of those 13 segments, just one, chopped up 
spread out in the gel. And so here's the segment from the victim, the deceased person, the person who was murdered. Uh, a, that particular segment of DNA, one of 13, was chopped up and spread out in the gel. Now, what are these? These are the exact same segment taken from drops of blood on the alleged assailant's shirt. The same segments of DNA chopped up and spread out on a gel. Wow, they match. The blood from the victim, the DNA from the victim's blood, and the DNA uh, from the blood on the alleged assailant's shirt. Is the alleged assailant in trouble? Yes, he is. Assuming it's a he. It didn't go into that detail. Uh, I'll just assume it's a he. And, uh, <clears throat> and but is, is this enough to declare the alleged assailant guilty? No, it is not. This would just be one of 13 segments. How many would have to match before the guy's in real trouble? All 13. I mean, not 12 out of 13. 12 out of 13, you're out of here, buddy. And uh, all 13 would have to match. But when all 13 match, then statistics are developed about the probability of, of this person doing it, not doing it, and so forth. And so, um, you have the idea? What is a DNA uh, fingerprint? It is a pattern of lines on a gel. And how are these comparative analysis, analyses done? Taking 13 different segments, 13 different gels, taking those segments, chopping them up with, with what do you chop DNA up with? You chop it up with restriction enzymes using a standard protocol. You chop that segment up, spread it out on the gel. Uh, there are unique patterns, different people's uh, DNA chop up in unique ways, creating a unique pattern on a gel. But I would say, based on this one that we see right here in front of us now, that guy's in trouble. If 12 more gels match in a similar manner, he's in real trouble. We'll see how much trouble as we work through the following pen cast. All right, that's it for this one.